Greetings, viewers at home, and welcome on another exciting show of the Petros Koza Show. Guys, with Ramin, I'm in a Petros Koza. We're now on Diva Yera Raga Daily. We're so orange, so orange. Ingo mi kenzi na kambi na kambi. Lamuta na muta ni mu komele man ya muina. Na so ekalimu lava. Don't be a shonga. Don't be a kamunisi. Nyeleti ya masasi. Why Diva Yera ya masasi? Na muta ebiti selengkubo. Wa muchato. Wa lekana. Na stiva ku ikare ola kutoa inkubo. Wa muchato. Wa lekana. Na muta ni muta selengkubo. Yena, yes, Ila, good as some seller. How shame this? I am forgetting. If you give me, I am forgetting. Push on, Kaka. Thank you. Yeah, I know, I know. Man, love a shoggy. Mama, I know. 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 Thank you. I know. 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 I am a lady, I am a sister, I am a I come from Lipombo, yeah, I am a and I am presently residing in Pretoria. Yes. Um, yeah, that's that's my lady, I am a sister. Yes, I am a sister. 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 Oh, oh, yeah, because I, I got the massage part. So the the other part is massage. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah massage. When yeah, my father massage. my father had it there in his mind, and he said, "Inyele tia massage, inyele tia mi." So that morning yeah. started. Yeah, shoots. that morning started. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and lights up. Yeah. That's me. Oh yes. <laughs> This one, and I'm there. I'm going to go to the land. I will find your uncle Jane, your cardinal goes to Galap. So, honey, um, I love this book, you know, the the artwork. Mm. Why, what you have in here? I'm going to say that we have a vina, little guy, I'm chatting. So, the 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 book, uh, our wedding in Kana. Firstly, why you chose to write about a wedding in Kana? Uh, interesting, you should ask me that because every time anyone sees the title Our Wedding in Canada, they are thinking, I'm talking about my wedding day, you know, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's a wedding. And let's just put it out there. Okay. Let's put it out there. I've never been married. Never been married. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he is throwing insults that are just going to give you signals. But I've never been married. But the, the title Our Wedding in Canada, sure. I, I normally tell people that everything and anything in the book. Yeah. I did not decide. Okay. From the title to the chapters mm. to how they mm. should be, mm. I, I didn't decide it. So when, when God spoke and he said it's time to write the book, and, and I understand why he would do it like that. Number one, I was not aspiring to be an author. Okay. So had he said write the book and leave it there, I would have thought probably it's my mind. Yeah. But when he aligned everything, it was even confirmation that mm. you are going to write, but here is the title. Mm. And when I'm so surprised about the title, then you could uh, now elaborate, speak, tell me what the wedding is. So mm. that's how I chose the, mm. or oh, that's mm. how mm. he chose, yeah, he chose the, the title. For you. Yes. Yeah, you know, um, and I saw beautiful mm -hmm. things in here. Yeah. And one, can we talk about Kana, the place Kana? Mm. Before you take a morning, you would go to Melayin. I would go to Kana, you would go to Melayin. Kana is uh, a place in Israel. Mm. Uh, let's first talk about it in the in the biblical form. Yes, it's the first place where Jesus Christ performed this miracle, the biggest miracle ever. Powerful. Because when you talk, you can ask anyone who, not even a Christian, what is the miracle that you know Jesus Christ did? They're not going to tell you about the side that they're not going to tell mm. you about the child that was dead. They will talk about Cana because wine was made. Yeah. Because wine was made, and you get to understand why wine is very important <laughs> at the later stage. So in Kana, it's, it's, it's where he performed this, this miracle, and it was at the wedding. Mm. And the important thing about it, the Kana part, I don't think it was Kana that is important. Yeah. It is how it was done, it was how it was done, and the number of people that were there, because it was at the wedding, you can imagine. There was a lot of people. Mm. So Kana for me, it's a place of restoration, that's what I call it. It's a place, of, place of miracles. Mm, yeah. mm, mm, place of miracle, Kana. Yeah. Listen, honey, today we're taking you to Kana. <laughs> today God is taking you to Kana. Yes. Allow us to, to, to navigate you to Kana. Yeah. I know you're looking for this. I know, I know you're going through something. I know you've been looking for a miracle. Yeah. Today, miracle is coming to you. So, and and in the midst of that, you are taking someone who's willing to, you know, face their career, yeah. someone who's willing to face life, yeah. workspace, growing up as a teenager, young adult, and all of that. What message specifically that after me reading this book, what is it that you want me to know? 
You know, with, with, with that book, even when I'm still sitting today, because you need to understand, sometimes I'm still in disbelief that you know, yeah. I wrote something. Yeah. And, with, and each time I go into it, all, each time I revisit it, there is, there is new revelation that comes with it. And one thing that I want one person to get, and I normally say that if you don't take anything or you don't hear anything in there, I want you to remember that he is still God even when things run out. Mm. He is still God mm. when you fail. Powerful. He is still God when you so much believe that it's about to happen and it did not happen. He, he is not God because he, he allowed you to go in. He is still God even when he says don't go in. So I want you to know that there's a God that sustains. There is a God whom when everyone else runs out and they say we cannot stand this situation, he is a God who comes in when there is death and he still speaks life. So when everyone is done reading this book, I want them to remember that there's a God that sustains, a God that restores, and he does it his own way in his own time. Mm. Yeah. His own way and his own time. Yeah. You know what? There's only one way today that I know who, when I address God, yeah. he will show him. Mm. When I call him Shikwe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even the hip hop cat, they try to do song, Shikwe, you know, you know, I'm saying, Shikwe, Sha Abraham, you know, I'm done. So, yeah, and, you know, we're going to make a yon about the guest of honor. Yeah. That is chapter number two. Yeah. What, 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 what are you telling us about the guest of honor? So, I mean, the minute somebody says you're a guest of honor at an event, yeah. you know even your seat is properly reserved. Yeah. Whatever, even if you can arrive at a later time, oh, yes. you will still find that seat. Power. Because the guest of honor is late, yeah. mm -hmm. is a no-no. Mm. It's reserved. Hallelujah. So now, when I, God was giving me the revelation about our wedding in Kana, and mm. he, he said to me, Jesus Christ was the guest of honor at that wedding. And remember again, when we talk about the wedding, we are talking about your life. He said to me, our wedding in Kana, when I say our we your wedding in Kana, I'm saying your life from the time you were born until the very end. That is yeah. an ongoing thing. Yeah. It's an event that is happening. Now at this wedding, who in your life, Mr. Koza, who is the guest of honor? Mm. Whom are you holding up high? Which seat you will not let anyone sit on? Now when you have reserved this place for Jesus Christ, mm. When he comes first, mm -hmm. when even you can get to a point where you say, I love my wife, I love my children, sure. but sure. he comes first. In the last couple of days, there was something that I got in the morning that he says, I am heard first in the mm -hmm. morning. You mm -hmm. need to hear me first in the morning. You need to hear me first in everything that you do. Because mm -hmm. if you hear me first, everything else will come in properly. Mm -hmm. So a guest of honor at this wedding in your life is to say that for me, I said in the book, I am grateful for my parents. I'm a PK. My father was a bishop. My mother, she's still alive even today. She's a bishop. And they made a choice for me to have this guest. Mm. But it's not to say that when, when they don't make that choice for you, you cannot make the choice. Yeah. One thing I love about this guest, if you read in the book, there's where I even said that even when at the later stage you look around in your tables, you're like, there is a chair that is not properly reserved. Yeah. The guest of honor, you go and get him. One thing I love about him, he'll never say to you, you are now 30, it's impossible. Mm. You go get him when you're 40 and you say, my life misses you. Yeah. In my life, I've been getting things wrong because there isn't this guest of honor that whom the message was given to by mm. the mother, mm. Mm. which is very mm. important. Mm. 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 Listen, honey, <clears throat> I'm telling you this, you know, take it from us today. We are here for you, you know. It's not by mistake that we're watching this, you know. God has a purpose, you know. God has something beautiful for you. Lalela, lalela. We may give you, you know, what we call your don don salvation or sell you whatever we can sell you, but Christ is real. Yeah. Yeah, is. Christ is real. Yes. We can play all jokes, we can demonstrate all kinds of different powers, yeah. but Christ, the Holy Spirit, yes. the Son of God, yeah. He's real. Amen. Listen, <laughs> and as, as, as I'm rushing, I'm rushing, you know, I want us to speak about the mother. Because mm. it's one thing that when I read about, you know what, yeah, it did the, the pots, you know. It made the me. pots to be yeah. done. <laughs> Jesus' mother spoke to his son. Oh, the mother. It's another important thing that you need to also have in your life. Sure. And I will say it time and time and again. It, is, it was not, um, when I said the mother in the book, those who have a copy will tell you, it was not because you gave birth to this person that you are mothering. I was not talking about gender. There are qualities 
that umama has. Yeah. You know, you don't have to birth, but what are you doing to this thing? Sure. And when I was talking about this, I looked into my life. When I was writing the book, though he was speaking, but he was using my journey. He said, remember how your path was very rocky at times and you gave up, yeah. but there were people that were pulling you up. I, I have mothers in my life. Sure. Beside my best mother that God has given yeah, to me, and she yeah, birthed me. Yeah. My sisters, there was a time, and there's still a time, even now they're playing a role of we are going to pick you up with prayers. When you give up, you need to understand that at that wedding, if there wasn't a person who cared enough to say, uh, it would have been an embarrassment. A mother is the one who's going to deliver the right message at the right time. Powerful. A mother is that person who, when everyone else is saying ill things about you, they will protect. Mm. That is why it comes down to qualities. A mother is that person when the house is burning, but she has nothing left. And I, I had this lady at that time in my life in 2019. You know, one day I just said, Mina, I can't do this thing anymore. And she said to me, remember who you are. Powerful. Remember who you were called to be. And she would say this to me time and time. And she would say it, Sikuluma, sitting. Yeah, yeah. And even when we go to prayers, she would, she would say it to God. that Remember whom you have called in this person. And that is a mother for you. That is a person who is going to go to God and say, God, she is going through the toughest time right now. But I know you are still God. You need to remember that no matter how saved you may be. Mm. But because no matter how much of yeah, a relationship yeah. you have with God, don't tell me you've never wrestled with him. Sure. You cannot tell me that you've never had a disagreement with him in prayer. Mm. You cannot tell me that you've never given up. You cannot tell me you wake up in good spirits every day ready to say, God, you are worthy. There are times where you'll be like, where are you hiding? I don't feel you. There are times where you even choose not to even speak to him. Sure. Now sure. the mother comes in. Mm. The mother stands when you cannot be able to stand. Mm. A mother will be able to, to say these things. You know, I, I normally say that I am so confident. You know when you have that confidence? That yeah. I yeah. know yeah. there's somebody praying for me some way. Mm because of the structures I've put up, mm. because of the people I've allowed into my corner. Powerful, powerful. You know what, as, as, as Nyele, you know, narrating, you know, this scripture, telling us about a bit of herself, I remember Job, Akuna, Abimiru, Amina, Yeah. For I know mm. that my Redeemer lives. He lives. I want to tell you this today. It is not by mistake that I'm still alive. Yeah. Votana by Zirim Saveni, by seeing people who were, you know, all medical and don't don't you can think about. Yeah. But my family being COVID. And when I for your shesho shawena, she shing was show, she slams a sick sicko, she quen busha colombia. For the fact that you know you are still alive, yeah. he hasn't done with you. Yeah. One day he spoke to Jacob and said, you know, I will still take you everywhere where I want to take you. Yeah. Until I'm done with you, I will bring you to the land, you know, to a space where I have agreement with you. Amen. Until you suffer a while, mm. I will come and establish you. Yeah. I don't know what you're going through right now, but listen, the very same Jesus yeah. whom we're speaking about, he can touch you. I remember one time he spoke to his disciple, so yeah. that yeah. can come. It's because of he knew that when he was with Peter, yeah. he couldn't be with John. Mm. When he was in David, he couldn't be in Pretoria. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit, it is the one that we share in. You know, receive the grace. Yeah. Nyele will pray with you before we leave here. You know, she will impart some certain things. Let us talk about, um, you know, uh, Ruth 3, mm. verse 18. Yeah. It's found in this book. All the questions I'm asking are in here. We're just giving you a glimpse of what is our wedding in Kana. Yeah. Then she'll also give you details how to get the book and so forth. Yeah. Ruth 3, 18. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you, this is sure. My sister tells me all the time, I know when well, Ruth you have this thing. So Ruth Ruth had to make it to the book. There were there were things that had to just make it to the book because they have mm. They have nurtured the person that I am. The scriptures yeah. that, when I was writing the book, I had to go take scriptures that have shaped the woman that I am today. And the story of Ruth, um, there was where I, I, I see myself in, in, in Ruth, I see myself in Naomi. And But one thing, why 318 especially, it is because it was reminding you, it does not matter how long it takes. Come, I tell you, there's a God that I serve. And when the time is right, he doesn't rest. 
He doesn't. You need to understand that he is for even when you don't feel him. You don't. You don't have to wake up every morning and you hear him speak for you to know that he's at work. You need to understand. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Sure. He said, "I will never forsake my children of Israel." Look, I'm, there's this prayer that my mom says that I, when she's praying, I hear it go. Jesus. So you need to understand mm. that when, mm. when, when mm. Naomi was encouraging Ruth, she was saying to Ruth that I have given you all the advices that I can possibly give you. I have told you how to beautify yourself. I've told you how to, 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 to behave in front of this man. But now you need to exercise patience. Mm. You need to understand that he is going to do it. You need to be taken through a process of having to wait. You need to be taken through, of later I was taught about process of, of seasons and all of those things. You need to be in that place where you understand that this God, it does not matter how long he takes. While he's sustaining you, remember that he will show up at the right time. So for me, that's what Ruth represented. Jesus told the servant, mm -hmm. fill the jars with water when the jars had been filled. What happened? Yo, when they just have been filled, the water. What are you filling yourself with? Mm. What, what are you what are you doing? Powerful. What are you feeling? Powerful. You need to be mm. filled with something for something to come out. Yeah. He needed to tell them, fill the jars with water, but not just fill them to the brim. And when I was when I was understanding why the brim and the Holy Spirit was like, mm. you need to understand they just have been sitting there for the longest of time. There were corners which were dry. Jesus. And he needed, he needed, he needed, he so needed to tell them that there are corners that only mm. I know about. Mm. And I want mm. you to mm. fill them. They need to be mm. dried mm. up. Yeah. It was now yeah. what water water is life. Water, water births. He was about to birth a exactly. miracle. And mm. for him to do that, he needed every corner to be wet. He needed everything to be touched. Mm. There is, a, there is, mm. there is a, a part in the book, a hymn that my father taught us, all of us at home, we know yeah, it. Yeah, I had yeah. to actually use it when we were burying him. I need to say, There's a part where he says, It, it gushes out. Uh, it could have only been blood that came out mm, when he was crucified, mm, but water mm, was there. So when we talk about the water in the hymn saying, fill it, but fill it to the brim, I want each and every corner. You know, I'm about to do this thing and people must be amazed. I want them to say, well, is this the same jar? Mm, the one that we saw that was there, people were using this jar for ceremonial washing. Mm, now Jesus mm, Christ is saying, I'm about to do it and I'm about to do it great. Mm, now, fill it to, to the brim, let it be washed. Mm. Let it be yeah, washed. Let yeah, everything yeah, yeah, be yeah. touched. So then when they come up, they will be like, is this the very same jazz? When God is about to do it in your life, mm. when he fills you to mm. a brim, people will say, but you were so empty. How did you get to the brim? Mm. Now we're not Bethlehem, I'm on song. Ah. Jesus. Now we're not Bethlehem, I'm on song. Thank you. Two corners for the second one, men like I wear. And listen, I am naked mm. to dance. You know, for 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 just you know, if I in the Niranda song, I hear Vachinella, Minquembo, Kumusu Quembo, Lishvangashi and Avon. And God has ordained this man so that this man may take these people to Canaan. Yeah. You know why? Because of this was the high priest, the only one who would go to the Holy of Holies yes. and never die. Amen. So that when people come and confess and confirm with him, he may not judge them. Because each and every time they say about their wrongs, about their abortions, yeah. about them killing people, he may think of himself what he's done. Mm. God is taking me somewhere. Amen. You know, maybe you've killed someone, yeah. maybe you've done something that is wrong. Yeah. As long as you repent, he's there to forgive you. Yeah. He's ready to welcome you. He's ready to give you a warm hug and use you again. Yeah. Look at Paul what he's done. Yeah. Look at Paul. Yeah. Look at David. Mm. L l listen, 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 listen. Unga kar, yes, I know. Don't cry. You know what? Don't cry. Nere will pray for you right now. Don't cry. Take notes. She'll give you her numbers. You will call her for further questions. Nere, yeah. let's talk about about you now. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've spoken about everything. Yeah. You've went through it all. You've went through life. Maybe what is it that you can tell someone that you've went through so they may understand that you're not fabricating a story. What have I not gone through? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Yo, I, yeah. Nilet has... Uh, and I, I now know that it was necessary for me to go through everything that I went through. But I, I am a single mother of two boys. Sure. 
um, I'm, I'm raising them single-handedly. Sure. It's just, and, and it's not because I can, but the grace of God. I've Amen. gone through abuse. I've gone through sexual abuse. I've been taken advantage of by people that were very close to me at the very young age. I remember one day I cried and I said, hey, I've had a privilege of having to confront one of the people that took advantage of me. And when we were in conversation I, and he was saying, I'm sorry, I said to him, can you give me my innocence back? Because the one thing I grew up caring, it was that fact you would see, I don't know how to be an innocent young girl. I, when, when, I think so many young women or a woman today who had to go through it at the young age, the one thing they worry about is that I've never been innocent. I've never been pure. My, my, I think when I wrote the book, there's a part, learning African yeah. You, you need to understand that that changes you. Abuse changes you. I've been through physical abuse in my, in my, in, in my, my other relationship. It, it got very physical. So when, when you feel like as a young person, there will be times when things are not going right. You'll be like, what else could come out of me? After all, this is, this is, this is near late. The only thing she knows is pain. I would, I would go into conversations with my mom for hours and I would tell her that I have never known peace my entire life. When is my peace coming? When is my moment of smiling coming? Because the only thing I've had to go through, it is pain. So I've, I've gone through all those kind of abuses. I, but I, 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 I rose. I don't know how, because I don't remember. I know I've gone through my own depression. And I, I, unfortunately for me, I had to go through them alone. Yeah. I, I did not, in as much as I've always had a corner that supports me, in my depression state, I've never had a corner. I would go into it, come out of it. Mm. One day I went home years ago and my mom was like, you're so dark. I know you're dark. But right now you're so dark, something tells me that there's things that you're going through and you're not telling me. I did not know how to do that. And I, I, I once did an interview and I told the lady that was interviewing me, I said to her, the worst thing about doing that is that because you are caring wounds which are not nest in the right way mm. you are just putting you're putting you're not even putting bandages mm. you find a tissue and you put the mm. when you pull the tissue out you start it's, bleeding yeah. and you bleed yeah. in a wrong place mm. and that is that is another thing about the book i want a young person who left to understand who would see i am going through all of this but i need to process in the <laughs> way so i don't go and bleed in wrong places when you don't heal properly when somebody comes to love you you won't actually see that. Mm. Lalela, <clears throat> we are sitting here, we are all broken vessels. Yeah. We all have been through something, mm. you know, somewhere, somehow, something was done wrong to us yeah. by someone we trusted. Mm. Paul, I went to the Lord thrice. Yeah. I sought him. Yes. I told him about my thorn. Yeah. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient enough. Yeah. I want to tell you, you are HIV positive. His grace is sufficient enough. Thank you. you are living with cancer. You know, you are a victim of rape. You still suffer from, you know, traumatic experience and all of that. His grace is sufficient, sufficient. enough. Yeah. When at the very same pain you're going through, every day you read about people who have been killed, burnt in houses, done wrong things, you know. People who are, you know, who have done things that when you think about them, they hurt you, but when you are still alive. Yeah. Tell me, if people want this book, how do they get hold of it? <clears throat> uh, so you get it directly from me. Um, my number is 061 241 um, I've got Twitter. Um, hashtag um, our wedding in Kana is everywhere. Awesome. Um, Facebook is Nile Yami Show. And I'm on Insta as well on the same name. And yeah, and I'm sure if you speak to Mr. Kosa after I've left, he can give you also more details. So you get it from me or from Shara Books. Shara Books has my books as well. Okay. Um, yes, and Lo Angali Pompo, there's Mr. Ngobeni as well. If you come into my social media, you'll see we, I, I always tag him on Facebook sometimes. He, he has my copy. So what we're trying to do is just, because when you're at home and then I have to Korea, it, you have to pay. So he gets it directly to you. Yes. You know what? Shinge is a shira ion, sharpens ion. Mm. The reason why you're watching this show is because if you are iron yourself, yeah. but you need this iron to sharpen you. Yeah. Please text him, WhatsApp him, but yeah, as which there's business hours, right? And there's family hours. Yeah. So during business hours, you can call her, get the book, seek for an advice. She's a preacher. 
She's a motivational speaker. She's a cooker. Mm. <laughs> I can't wait to go to her house and dine <laughs> and taste, you know. <laughs> Listen, man, there's a lady now who's, who's just thinking to take her life. There's a young girl now who's just been taken advantage uh, by some group of boys. You know, you know uh, her daughter, she's going through a traumatic... You know, there's an old woman now who's just holding a key, you know. There's a mother right now who speaks who's a police stage to open a case against, you know, you know, there's, there's a woman out there who doesn't know There's someone right now who uh, the landlord, you know, is kicking them out. You know, there's someone right now who just feel, you know, like, you know what, this is the last I have. I'm going to prepare this, eat yeah. and die. Yeah. There's someone in that edge. There's someone who's ready to commit suicide. What can you say to them? You know, it's, you, you, you went and you touched on a very important part of my life. When you speak about a woman who does not know what she's going to do tonight. Because I am, I am for mothers who have lost hope. Amen. After I am for young people. When I think of a mother, and I'll tell you why I always think of a mother, allow me to tell you this, is because I have seen me having to go through life raising kids alone. But it's a good thing you, you went and you quoted scriptures without actually saying anything about Amen. them. The, the, the woman said to Elijah, I just have just a little bit Amen. that I have left. I'm going to prepare this and my son and I, we're going to eat and die. There's a person who is saying, there's nothing really left for me. I might as well die. I've been to the suicide attempt business. I tried it, didn't Jesus. do it, did not work. Jesus. Now let's go back. Hagar was right there. It's yeah. part of the book as well. It's yeah. in the book. Yeah. Hagar was there and the child is now crying because the water and the bread that Abraham had prepared was now finished. Powerful. Remember, he, he did not give them enough to last yeah, in a lifetime, yeah. but he gave them for Jesus. now. And there was a reason for that. Mm. Because God was saying, I don't want you, Abraham, to continue with this, but me as God, I will take care of her because I am for single mothers as mm. well. So mm. anyone and anybody who is saying they are sitting, you know, you've just lost your job. You're thinking, what is going to happen to me today? Go and think about what happened with, with Agar. Mm. She was there in the wilderness. Mm. She was ready to say, I'm putting my son here, he's going to die, I'm going to look the other way, and God arrived. Mm. But you need to call on him. Amen. Let's remember that at all times you need to call on him. Call on Elijah him. arrived at that house, mm. and then he said, mm. do this, if you have faith, it shall be multiplied, and it, it was multiplied. <laughs> so for any person who's going through it all, and they're ready to just say, it is done, I'm telling you, it is not done. Like you said, Paul said three times, mm. I want it to be removed. God says, I'm going to sustain you. Mm. He's a God who sustains. A mother who's Jesus. going through a lot with their children. Uh. Remember, God gave you those children. He borrowed them to you. You take them back to God. You take <clears throat> things back to the manufacturer. Mm. You say, God, mm. I don't know what to do with my son anymore. Mm. And I'm not saying this because it's easy. Not it, because it happens overnight. I am a person who believes in the process. A process that has God will come, will come out with promises mm. that he's mm. made. Mm. Listen. Asiko isimo unkulunkulu angeke asilimise. You know, guno mshabelelo oti agu kujesu angeke abuenze. Lalela, you may have a situation more, or kaba nguti it's more than you 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 can bear. Yeah. Lalela mdana sekaya. There's a woman who suffered for 12 years. Yeah. You know, the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. We don't know her name to this day. Yeah. But listen. You know what? She convinced herself yeah. that if I can touch the hem of his garment, yes. if I can touch the hem of his garment, if I can touch the hem of yeah. his garment, and he did, and she was hit. Yeah. Lady, can you please pray with us? Let us bow our heads as I pray. Papa, he beat our own sign, so Christ the one of the my father, we know that because we are here, we're not here because we've done something better or better than the next person, but because I, there's this grace that I believe so much in. And right now, as we're sitting here, my father, we may be sitting here doing an interview, but my father, we are sitting here speaking to the people that you have sent us Jesus. to. I believe that, my father, this was a divine appointment that you have made. There is a life that through this message that was delivered in the last couple 
couple of minutes, somebody is going to receive their needs, something to hold on to. There's a lifeline that you were, you were bringing to somebody. There's a bridge that you had to bring through this message. My father, I pray I do not know who's watching. I don't know who is going to see this after how long, but I believe in a God of time and a perfect timing. And I know that whomever needs to hear this today, you will give them today. And whoever is going to need it in the next 10 years, you will bring it to them in the next 10 years. But the only thing, my father, I'm asking is that let your will be done. Do not let us lose our mind. Jesus. My father, we're living in times where things are so much uncertain. We're living in times where people are losing everything they have. But God, if we hold on to you, said if I hear you first, if I see you first, if I take you first, everything else will make sense even in a senseless situation. And right now, my father, I'm bringing that word to everyone and anyone right now who's listening, who's going to be watching. My father, I say to them, let them hold on. I want you to help them to hold on. I want them to know that there is a God who is sustaining us. You said you will sustain us when you take us through a process. My father, we may lose everything we have and we think, what else can we do? My father, I know that you are God the healer. You are God the provider. And I say, have your way in them, in us, great God that you are. We trust you and we love you so much, Holy Spirit. And there is no, nobody like you. And you can never be compared to anything. I'm ringing on soon and you papa. In my family, I'm going to ask you 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 and we should come to some of the women I was seeking who come and I want you to come to the other corner we love you so much Holy Spirit there is none like you Amen Amen Thank you so much Amen Thank you so much Amen Thank you Thank you so much And we pray people are going to be delivered yeah. People are going to be touched People are going to be transformed Yeah Listen, you know what to do Don't forget to subscribe Share the content Kasike, like a donation Tamu ina kuntiru lwe mashweni we still hope you want that. And to those who are doing it, thank you so much. May God bless you. We love you. Shalom.